All right. Ben Lewis just got through his VO2 test, and what we're going to do is go over the results of his test by what our screen shows here. What this test is monitoring is the VO2 in milliliters per kilo per minute. It's measuring the amount of carbon dioxide being blown off, the blue. It's measuring what's called respiratory exchange ratio, or other people call RQ, the mixture of fat to glucose. It's measuring heart rate. It's measuring the exact amount of fat being used throughout the intervals and the total calories. It's also giving you what percent of fat through the whole stage that he's able to use. So each one of these colored lines is reflective to VO2, CO2, respiratory exchange, heart rate, fat calories, calories per minute. So again, the color lines, we can see if we look at this um, blue line that you see right here, Ben's got a high rate of fat being burned, but it significantly drops when he gets past five minutes. And from that point, about five minutes and 50 seconds, Ben's burning nothing the rest of the test but, but glucose calories. Well, this, this is unique to every individual. Everything about exercise prescription is using the data by his peak ability. So what we're going to do on these bottom lines is look how Ben, when we started him doing mechanical work, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good right there. When, when we started doing mechanical work, Ben, at, when we look right here, at about two minutes, 208, Ben's using 11.2 milliliters of oxygen. He's blowing off carbon dioxide that's far less than what he's taking in oxygen, which makes his RQ a number below 1.0. Anything below 1.0 is showing Ben's using fat as an energy source. So let's take a look at it. At a heart rate of 116, as Ben's doing his mechanical work on the climber, Ben's burning 3.2, excuse me, Ben's burning 1.89 calories of fat. So this shows how much fat calories are contributing. So why he's burning at, at this work rate, if we look again to, to two minutes, he's burning 1.89 calories of fat, which is 48% of the energy of 396. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna come down. Let's come down to here, where now he's at 329, and he's at a 21 VO2, 21.3. His actual RQ has made it at that mechanical work. And, I, and this is where I got been climbing 80 to 90 feet a minute, which is more mechanical work. We started at 40 to 50. But if you look at that 79, he's at a heart rate that's gone up to 127. And he's burning more fat now. 69% of the energy is coming from fat. 5.14 calories of fat at a 7.39 total calories. Well, let's look further. As we give Ben more mechanical work, okay, and here we are, five minutes and 58 seconds into the test, Ben's using 34.2 calories of oxygen, of oxygen. He's using this many milliliters of oxygen through the test. He's now at an RQ that's above the 104. He's above 10, so he's at 104, and you can see he's blowing off more carbon dioxide than he's taking in oxygen. That's why you see the RQ above 1.0. And you can see for that heart rate, 158, Ben at the moment now doesn't have the ability to use fat for energy. He's burning more calories, but they're glucose calories. Now let's see from 34 what Ben peaks at. What does Ben peak in the most amount of oxygen he can use? And you can see as we go through the test, it comes out to be 46.3. At 46.3 oxygen cost, which is 10.59 in, in minutes, that's when he reached that, Ben had a heart rate of 174. But again, he's not able to use fat for energy. He's burning more calories, but again, they're 100% glucose calories. So Ben has a VO2 that peaks at 46.3. Now you can see, I'm sorry, he, a little bit more, 46.6. So that 46.6, which is the highest number we got now at 11.49, you can see that he's got a heart rate of 176, but again, there's no ability to use fat. 
he is burning more calories. Now when you see recovery, this is when we stop the test because when Ben reached the 46.6, no matter how much more work I told him to do, his body couldn't deliver or use more oxygen. He didn't have the ability to deliver or use more. And again, this is a test that shows it. You can scream till you're blue in the face, but he had reached his peak ability at this moment. Now, the RQ, 1.16. Normally, this is test data for somebody doing exercise prescription that we could have stopped Ben at 44.6. But basically, instead of 46.6, 44.6. This would have gave me all the data to write a program for Ben that would have been towards building more aerobic strength, which also carries over to learning how to burn more fat. Ben, when he got to 46.6, we know by the test data, was highly anaerobic. And th that means no matter how much toughness he, ha he has, he will eventually get to a point where the steady rates for the duration just deteriorate. And it's just like Grandma saying, he's trying too hard. Why not take these elite athletes and teach them how to train off their test data in three month cycles so their invested time creates more physiological change. Now, if we look at, at Ben's fat burning, this is another screen that we can pull up that gives a different way of looking at Ben at the moment. When we, when we take a look at this new screen, you can see the gray area is between two minutes and four minutes of the test is where Ben used the most amount of fat. But that's when the intensity of effort I gave him was the least. So we always use more fat for energy and less intense movements. Now the goal in building aerobic strength is to learn how to train more intense when the body has a reason to use more fat. And that can't come from impractical training. The whole idea with exercise prescription, building aerobic strength, is to train unique to the individual. So whatever window, and you can see right now this window, whatever window of fat burning, that we in three months can push that window to be more, more able to use more fat longer. And being able to burn more fat longer is a great advantage to an endurance athlete because it spares muscle glycogen. That means when he's running a five minute mile, it's not that he can only hold it for three miles, he can hold that five minute mile pace for 10 miles. And if he can hold that pace for 10 miles, staying with a very low RQ, not, not causing his respiratory exchange ratio to get above 1.0, he's, he's gonna be able to have more glycogen left for high intensity movement later in the race. So everything about endurance work is taking data that we have the technology now to make exact to the individual. If you do a blood pressure test, they don't guess at it. They don't de guess at a triglyceride test. They don't uh, guess at what your uh, cholesterol is. Well, it, this is a test that's exact to, to those measures, but it allows a person to exercise for the goals of, of better cardiovascular health and a better way to attack the ability of whatever fat you're trying to reduce. You've got a way of now training exactly off test results that create a condition for your body to learn to burn more fat. What we want people to realize, there's a lot of people not eating more than the next door neighbor, but their fat burning potential is being inhibited by the way things have been marketed to train, as if training more intense, especially if it's frequent in the week, is gonna change the body magically to, you, to prefer more fat for energy.